Welcome to the Strive Scan College Launchpad. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today to share more about their school and their business program. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but will be around for the entire session to answer your questions. My name is Raina and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, we have a few housekeeping items to go over. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website, including more programs this week and in May. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash launch. Now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, Winona State University. Hi, I'm Katie Seisha. I'm from College of Business at Winona State University, and I would like to welcome you tonight. Um, who are we? Well, we are um, located on, in Southeast Minnesota, right along the Mississippi River. You can see the picture in the background right behind me. Um, we are a Division II athletics school. Uh, we're a mid-sized university, about 8,000 total undergraduate students. And then we are a school that is committed to residential education. We like our students on campus if possible. Uh, we do have seven College of Business majors um, within our majors. Uh, we have accounting. Um, we also have a master's degree option available, um, a master's in professional accounting um, available to our students. Uh, business administration, which is our general um, business degree. It's a broad-based business degree um, that encompasses management and all of the other business areas. Um, a lot of our students that are entrepreneurial minded um, choose general business or the business administration major. We have economics and finance as well. Um, finance is an area that we um, typically see a lot of students go into um, investments, into financial management. Um, we also have some certificates available in that area as well. Human resource management is one of the most robust HR programs um, in the upper Midwest. And as part of that program, we do include um, two OSHA certifications um, that students can choose to do as part of their coursework. Um, and those OSHA certifications are incredibly helpful when you are trying to differentiate yourself from um, other potential students or prospective um, students when you are applying for jobs. We have management information systems, which is the computer part of business. Um, and it is a STEM certified um, major. Therefore, you do get the additional years of OPT, um, just like you would if you were doing um, a degree in the science and engineering area. And then our marketing program rounds out our seven majors. Um, in, in marketing, we also um, offer an opportunity to be part of our sales team. And our sales team travels internationally um, to international sales competitions. We also have minors that students can pair with their program in business, um, not only to add value to their degree, but also um, to give them a second area of interest. And so you'll see those on the screen and our students are um, able to mix and match those with any of our majors. Uh, minors are not required in our program. Um, however, we do find that a lot of students want to add a little value to their degree. Um, and this is one way to do that easily. A few quick facts about Winona State. Um, we do have about 800 business students within the seven majors, and we are an AACSB accredited institution. And what that means is that we have an accreditation that less than 5% of business schools worldwide have, which speaks to the quality of our students, our faculty, and our staff, and the standards that we hold all of them to. We do have an average of a 97% job placement rate within six months of graduation. And so we do feel that we provide a phenomenal education to our students, giving them real world experience um, so that they do stand out um, on a resume um, for different organizations. Our focus at Winona State is on experiential learning and co building community partnerships. And so not only do our students learn the fundamentals of the courses that they're taking, but many times they have an opportunity to actually practice that 
um, and through community partnerships, through projects, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, we are a residential campus. However, in College of Business, we do have two online options. Um, the online options that we have are a degree completion program in either human resource management or business administration. And those degree completion programs um, typically come into play once a student has an associate's degree. Um, so typically when students are transfer students, then they're eligible to do that program. We also see a lot of adult learners in these programs as well. So Winona State University is all about create your more in our college of business. And what does that mean? And for you as a student, what that means is that we work really hard to make sure that we create opportunities for you and that you as a student have as many opportunities as you would like, um, not only to distinguish and differentiate yourself from other potential candidates for a job, but also to give you um, an opportunity to build confidence, to network um, so that you have the best resume possible and you are that standout candidate upon graduation. Some of the ways that we do that is by um, encouraging internships for our students, building company relationships around the area, as well as making sure that students have the opportunity to, to build strong relationships, not only with their peers, but also with uh, community leaders um, and business leaders that Winona State is connected with. Part of that also includes travel. We do have both a travel study option and a traditional travel uh, study abroad option. Um, so we have partnerships with about 22 countries right now for the study abroad option. And then our travel study are actually trips that our students take with faculty members. So anywhere between one and three week trips um, that students are allowed to participate in, in a little bit more safer environment than going abroad. Um, and so we would encourage you to look into those if you're interested in travel as well. I hope that you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about Winona State and we look forward to talking to you more. Have a great evening. Thank you, Winona State University. Okay, up next we have with us John Cabot University. All right, thank you very much. Let me get this set up. So can you see my presentation? All right. All right, so my name is Ramsey. I'm the admissions counselor for John Cabot University, um, which is a university in the heart of Rome. It's an American university and I actually graduated from there close to five years ago. So if you, if you guys have any questions about you know either sides of those things, uh, I do know what it's like to be a student there. Um, but yeah, let's jump right into it. So like I said, uh, we're an American institution, um, which means when you graduate, you actually get an American accredited university. So um, you, know, you can come back. That's a question that I do get quite a lot. You can come back to the US. It's like earning a degree from anywhere in the US. So no need to worry about that. Um, we um, are a liberal arts institution. Our student bodies right here, as you can see. So most of our students are Italian. Um, we do have 30% American students and then students from all around the world, really. Um, that's kind of the best part about going to John Cabot is having that diversity. Um, besides, of course, getting to live in Rome, which is one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, we're a pretty small school. Right now, we actually are just over 1,400 students. So we're a bit larger than that number. Um, and we're looking to uh, except our biggest class this fall. Um, so we're going to be over 1500 students. So we're growing. Um, I know it doesn't sound like a lot of students, but for our, our school it is. Um, but yeah, we're around 15 students per class. Um, you know, the small class sizes, you actually get to know your professors. Um, yeah. So academics, here is our list of majors um, as well. All of these are offered as minors, as well as the ones at the bottom. Um, you know, I can't go into all of these, but we do have 14 majors and 19 minors. So um, please let me know if you guys have any questions about those. Um, like I said, they are more the liberal arts education, but um, you can definitely double my uh, double major or you can even have a major and then two minors. Um, it's nice. You can build your own schedule and your own major. Um, so even studying abroad, I know what being abroad in Rome might be abroad enough, but if you want to study abroad, you can come to Rome. Um, and study abroad at a lot of different institutions. We have a long, long list um, around the world. So you can study at these institutions for a semester or even up to a year and you don't have to pay any difference in tuition. So it's, it's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, no shortage of travel when you're living over there in Europe, I can guarantee that. 
Um, something that's big at John Cabot is the professional opportunities. We do a lot of that. Um, of course, it's about the effort you put into it, but um, it's not for, for lack of you know, opportunity. We have partnerships with, I think now it's over 700 uh, companies and organizations. Um, and we invite these companies to our campus three times a year where you get to talk to them, see what they're looking for in an applicant, hopefully get an interview. Um, and as you can see, over 85% of the students uh, who get an interview actually end up getting the position uh, because we have longstanding relationships with these organizations and send them students for internships quite a lot. Um, so it's a big thing at John Cabot. We do want to get you some professional experience before you even leave college. Um, here's just some of the examples of where our students get uh, their internships. It's nice being in Rome because it's a very central European place. There's a lot of um, you know, hubs and headquarters of different organizations. Um, so these red dots are our buildings. We have you know, classes and cafeterias and housing. All of these different red dots kind of represent them. They're pretty close. I, I would say they're all within you know, three to five minutes walking of each other. Let's um, click. Um, so first we have our Critelli campus. It's right on the river. Um, it's our newest building and it has uh, a bunch of new classrooms. It's like I said, right on the river. So you get to look out, uh, um, very beautiful view. Uh, our president's office is there, our admissions office is there. Uh, and then we have our Guarini campus, which is our oldest campus, uh, has our auditorium, uh, library in there, a bunch of student lounge areas uh, to study at the top um, uh, of the terraces. Sorry, my computer is being extra slow. Yeah, and then we have our Tiber campus, another short five minute walk down the road, uh, has a bunch of student service offices, our classrooms, and then our cafeteria. I don't need to tell you that the food is amazing over there in Italy. Um, and then we have our own art facility. It's nice to sometimes have your own uh, space for that, have your own space for, you know, a lot of people come to Rome to be able to study art. Uh, it's a very inspirational and artistic city. So uh, I actually took my photography courses here. So you can be doing photography, graphic design, sculpting, painting, whatever it is. Uh, it's nice to have your own space. Um, question I get a lot is our housing. Um, we do have our own housing. They're all apartment style. I guess they just differ in location. Um, but yeah, you can have anywhere from two to eight roommates. They are sometimes very big apartments. Uh, they're all pretty close to campus. It's kind of nice having an apartment life because you get to have a kitchen and maybe a small balcony and kind of feel like a local right away. I'm just checking my time here. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of student clubs and organizations. Obviously, I can't go into all of these, but I think there's a little something for everybody here, and that kind of represents Rome as well. Um, no matter what you're looking for, Rome has an abundance of it um, since Rome. Um, I'm going to go on to our admissions. We do have athletics, but I can't go into that right now. Um, so we are in the Common App. We just need your transcripts, uh, two letters of recommendation, 600 word personal essay and an interview, most likely with me. Um, and we've gone test optional and uh, I believe we'll go test optional for the next year as well. Um, we do have a lot of financial aid. Our tuition is just under 27,000 for the full year. Um, and that's without any scholarships. And as you can see, over 85% of our students do get a scholarship from us. We do take the FAFSA as well because we're an American institution. Um, but yeah, please let me know if you guys have any questions. That's a QR code if you guys were hoping to scan and have all the information that I was just talking about. Um, but yeah, my name is Ramsey uh, for John Cabot University and I'll put my information in the chat. Thank you, John Cabot University. Just a reminder to our attendees, you can put your questions in the Q&A button on your screen. Okay, next we have Viterboro University. Okay, so um, my apologies, they're not with us at this moment. Um, let's go back to the University of Wisconsin, Platteville. Is everybody seeing the screen? Correct, okay. My name is Chris Kirkenbush. I am, let me get the slideshow started. 
I am a regional admission counselor with the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Um, I am a regional for the state of Iowa and Northwest Illinois as well. So today I'm going to highlight a little bit about Platteville School of Business. A lot of students out there may be wondering where Platteville is located. We are actually in southwestern Wisconsin. Uh, these are some distances to give you an idea. We are one of 13 schools in the UW system. Uh, we have a student enrollment of approximately 6,700 students. We are considered a medium-sized school here in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, 50 majors and 76 minors, and our student-to-teacher ratio uh, is, again, at about 20 to 1. Uh, we really pride ourselves on having that connectivity, being able to uh, connect with those students and faculty in smaller class sizes. And another plus is that everything that our professors teach is taught by them. They are the drivers of um, our students getting their degrees and getting the uh, insight within business because they also have most likely have had business experience as well. I'm gonna skip this one, I think, because probably not going to have a lot of time. So what is a Platteville business education? Well, some of the fast facts are we have quite a few faculty, uh, a good majority of them are going to be full time. Um, and then we have in the School of Business about 615 undergraduate students. And we have quite a few online graduates as well. There are going to be 15 degrees within the School of Business and seven minors. Something that kind of differentiates a differentiates us is that um, we focus a lot on applied learning. So a lot of competitions and skills. We actually had a business symposium about a week and a half ago where some high school students came on and had a competition. And then there's also those client-based projects. And on this little um, guide down below, um, we are definitely the practical side, giving you that skill set when you graduate uh, to go out and get those jobs and have those soft people skills, the critical thinking, the collaborative. We are not a research focus. We do have it, but that is not our focus. We are going to be focusing on that other end, the practical aspect of that. So this is an example of some of our degrees. Uh, we have two uh, two-year sister branch campuses. You, uh, we have Richland, and then we also have Baraboo, and that you can get your associate degrees and then seamlessly transfer over to finish at Platteville with our seven areas within our bachelor's program. Then we have our master's programs there on the right side. Uh, a big one that we have expanded upon is going to be our supply chain management. So we have quite a few different modalities. Of course, we have the face-to-face. -face, uh, that is our bread and butter. We really want to have that connection and give the students the opportunity to uh, expand their, um, their outlook on everything. And then we also have online, uh, except for professional sales, uh, that is an option. And then we do have print-based or e-learning. At Platteville, it is encouraged to have a minor when you have your major. One of those that really stands out is our entrepreneurship program. There are very few schools in our state that has this track where it's about uh, nine credits that you take where you learn how to run your business, whether it's online or physical structure, you know how to run your business and it pairs really nicely with, let's say, accounting or marketing or HR. Another focus is going to be our student engagement. Uh, these are examples of our students um, having the ability to connect and network um, at, with different areas. And then a lot of students are wondering why Platteville? Well, number one is our faculty with the academic credentials and that management experience. So many of our professors have come from business. They have that rural experience to share with them and have those connections. Uh, we also focus very much on our faculty being a mentor. And then we have immediate admission into the business school. You do not have to apply. And it's an efficient program with stackable credits. We talked a little bit about the focus on applied projects within um, your area of study. Uh, beyond that, these are some of our employers that we have internships with. So they're quite varied and broad. And then these are examples as well. Uh, if you're going to go into finance, you may have a business evaluation for an acquisition uh, supply chain. They are very real world. They are locally within, we'll say, Wisconsin, but you can also have some of these uh, in your hometown if you develop that relationship. I just wanted to quickly highlight a little bit the study abroad program. Uh, we have signature programs, especially the Hochschulas in Germany. Um, and then we have short-term programs as well. Some in winter and others are going to be during the summer. Um, that uh, Wiesbaden aspect, 
uh, those are other schools that come together and you collaborate on working together um, in finding solution that a business had um, brought to the forefront for that specific study. So it's a fun time. Uh, we are just getting back on board with that this year as well. And internships, every student at Platteville, and that was one of my questions, uh, What's unique about us, every student has to have an internship in order to graduate from Platteville, and they're all paid internships. So you're going to earn at least $16 uh, dollars an hour, and then 88% of those students get job offers. So that's something that's unique about Platteville. And then I just wanted to sum up, my name is Chris Kirkenbush, and I'm a regional admission counselor. But if you really wanted to speak with the director at the School of Business, Les Hollingsworth would be more than happy to assist you with that. So I am complete. Thank you, University of Wisconsin Platteville. Okay, next we have Marquette University this evening. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Korea Harker, and uh, can everyone see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, I am the Assistant Director of National Recruitment um, at Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm so thankful for the, you being here uh, this evening to learn more about uh, these wonderful institutions, and specifically Marquette University. <clears throat> Marquette University, as I mentioned, we are located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is the largest city in the state. Uh, we have an average class size of 23, um, with just over 8,000 undergraduate students. So you have about 4,000 graduate students. So we really are uh, 12,000 students, uh, a truly medium-sized institution um, uh, that, that really make up a wonderful community. Uh, it's really important to know that we do have a 14 to 1 faculty to student ratio, so our faculty will know you by name. You really are able to build a name for yourself. You'll have a, a really a strong chance to get to know the peers in your classes, and you're doing this in, in a really vibrant uh, city um, within um, Milwaukee. For students who are really interested in our College of Business program, we do offer a very holistic admissions review. So you have to apply with either the Common App or our Marquette application. Uh, it is free to apply either one. Uh, you would in include an essay, uh, your transcript, uh, test scores, but we are test optional. Um, so you can decide really how you want to put your best academic foot forward. And letters of recommendation are optional as well. Typically, students who are more competitive for admission at Marquette have a 3.4 GPA or higher, and they're strong in four years of rigorous math. Um, we do like to see at least pre-calculus on your application. It's a really exciting time to join the College of Business right now because um, we are building a brand new business building. So you're seeing that on your slide right now. Um, our students really enroll um, from day one. So you're going to start in classes your very first semester. Uh, you'll be able to declare your major and apply with either your first or your second choice major within business. You're going to find that we have a really strong sequence of courses. So from day one, you're going to be starting in um, our classes, uh, really being prepared to get real world experiences in addition to the, the curriculum that we offer. The first year courses include what you see on the screen. So it's really preparing our students well for uh, the structure of our curriculum and what you're going to find in the business world and community and really preparing you uh, for your next steps and to help reach your career goals. So really hands on learning, um, applying uh, what you're going to learn in the classroom to, to experiences. You're going to find that our students are really multi-interested as well. So we have 11 different majors uh, within our, our curriculum within the College of Business, and just uh, over 85 or 58 percent of our graduates earn more than one business major. Um, a lot of them are multi-interested in doing this within the four-year time span to graduate from Marquette as well. You'll find a really strong connections with internships. So 90% of our students participate in at least one internship, but more than 60% do two internships. They're really well connected to the companies that want to hire the Marquette business student. And you're going to find that we have just over a 97% placement rate for last year's graduating students. 
uh, within six months of graduating. So our students are, are really well prepared uh, to go on uh, to their next phase in, in their careers. And we have over uh, seven Fortune 500 companies uh, that live in the Milwaukee area. And so Harley-Davidson, Kohl's, uh, Pfizer, which is part of the Pfizer Forum, the Northwest of Mutual. Uh, you'll see more companies on your screen as well that have great partnerships within our, our students. We also have a, a really great experiences outside of the classroom. So we have opportunities for internships uh, for credit, um, as well as many of them are paid internships. Uh, we really, you're going to have opportunities uh, to really uh, experience studying abroad, if that's something that's really important for you. We have a lot of partners uh, across uh, the world, um, a lot of sister institutions where you'll pay market tuition um, and be able to study and, and live uh, at those uh, different institutions and still stay on track to graduate within four years. We have a lot of accelerated degree programs within our College of Business as well as a partnership with pre-law scholars. So if you're interested in going to law school, we have a strong program where you can be admitted to our law school program um, early uh, and know that you're committed uh, to law school right after you uh, finish your undergraduate uh, business degree. Our students are really well prepared to go on to their uh, receive their CPAs or their CFA exams and really making sure that those next steps uh, are there for you if that is a goal that you have in mind. My contact information is on the screen. Um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to work with you uh, to tell you more about Marquette. I would love to have you join the Marquette family. And again, thanks for being here and I look forward to connecting. Thank you, Marquette University. Just a quick reminder to our attendees, you can put your questions in the Q&A for our presenters. And next we will have SOAS University of London. Hi, everybody. I hope you can see my screen. Um, I'm just going to check that we're in the right mode. Is that working for you? Mm -hmm. um, I would just like to introduce SOAS from SOAS University of London. My name is Lisa and I want to give you a brief overview of studying at SOAS in the city of London. And there are many reasons to, to come and study at SOAS. One is our location. We are a truly central London location in the heart of Bloomsbury. London's famous literary district. We have degrees which have a global focus and they're taught from a non-Eurocentric perspective. So you will get a very broad, unique education. We have world-class facilities and leading academics who are practitioners in their field. We're a relatively small university in the UK. We're about five, and a half thousand students on campus. And that creates a very friendly community atmosphere and we have small class sizes. We're within the global top 50 for arts and humanities and our student community is incredibly diverse. About 54% of students are from overseas from about 135 different countries. In terms of the global rankings, you can see here that we're second in the world for development studies, 15th in the world for politics, and 10th for anthropology. And in terms of finance and management, we become fifth in the UK for employability. And 
just having a quick look at studying in the heart of central London. So you can have a glimpse of our campus here in beautiful Bloomsbury. All of our buildings are situated together and we're literally round the corner from the British Museum and about 10 minutes from Oxford Street. Again, this is the famous Senate House building, which we also occupy, and the SOAS Library on the left-hand side. And here's a close-up of the library. It's one of five national research libraries in the UK. So it's, it's, it's a very famous library. It's the largest library for the study of Africa, Asia, and the Middle East within Europe. And again, a quick look at life in London. London was ranked the best city in the world in 2022. And it's one of the most cosmopolitan diverse cities in the world with over 300 languages spoken. We're also home to 1 million businesses. So it's an incredible place if you want to stay and work after your studies. And in terms of our subjects areas, we're a specialist institution in arts and humanities and social sciences. We're looking more at management here. So we offer a whole range of programs in international management and accountancy and finance at both undergraduate and master's level. We also have a very good economics department and this will allow you to combine your program with other degrees, so possibilities of taking economics and politics or economics with international languages and having a year overseas in Japan or China, for example. And just a final glimpse at some of our world class destinations for our graduates. And if there's anything you want to, to talk to me about SOAS, you have any questions, please get in touch. I'm aware we're a UK university. It's a very, very different system in terms of applications, in terms of the degrees. Our degrees are three years for undergraduate and one year for masters. So if you want to know a little bit more about that, please put your questions in the chat. I'll leave my email also for you. Thank you. Thank you, so as University of London. Okay, well, if I can have all of our presenters join us, we will go through some questions. Okay, what's one thing you want students to remember about your business program? And we will start back with Winona State. One thing that I would like students to remember about our business program is that we are all about experiential learning. We want students to create their more, and so we provide tons of opportunities for students um, to make their degree their own uh, while studying with us. And John Cabot University. Yeah, I would say that, um, you know, being that we are a school in Rome, um, you get uh, actual international experience, and I think that is pretty important. Um, to gain those skills, those communication skills as well. Um, so not only do you get that business um, real life experience, but it's in an international setting. And the University of Wisconsin Platteville, what's one thing you want students to remember about your business program? I think the business program at Platteville really stands out for having every single one of our students who graduate within the business program uh, are, are required to have an internship. It speaks volumes on our professors and their ability to help those students get those internships, make recommendations for them, um, and they're paid internships as well. So, so many of our students have the ability to maybe go into their last year with the job offer from those internships. And if the job offer didn't come, uh, it is the greatest um, opportunity to experiment with everything that you learned over those last three or four years during that internship and um, have that opportunity to put on your resume that uh, you did participate in an internship, whether it's going to be for a semester or for, um, you know, uh, 
a semester and a, and a summer. It, it's just a great experience for all of those students to participate in that type of event. Um, and so that would be my number one um, reason to study at UW platform. Great. Marquette University. Yeah, so one of the wonderful things about our business program is just the community. You're going to be really joining a vast network of alumni. And to give you kind of an example of this, we're building a brand new business building. It's $60 million, and it was all donor funded from alumni who come from um, Marquette's College of Business and Marquette University. And that true commitment to students is really seen in a new facility that's going to be a state of the art for our students but also in that mentorship program. So we have not only what I've shared in the presentation today of the internship opportunities, really strong job placement rate, that really well-rounded education as a Jesuit Catholic institution at Marquette, but you are going to really be prepared and have a, a strong network of alumni who care about our students that wanna help you be successful. And we have a mentorship program and 300 mentorship relationships with students uh, throughout their four years to really help make sure that you're on track for the field that you want to study in business, getting that support and really getting connected and prepared um, after graduation. So as University of London. I would say, sorry, I mute. Yeah, I, I think the main thing about SOAS is our, our global focus. So even within degrees such as international management, accountancy and finance, you'll have opportunities to study global finance systems. You will learn how to, to operate within the financial systems of countries around the world. And you have a choice depending on the different regions that you're interested in. And I think as well as offering courses, within these regions, because our students are so diverse, you're exposed to such a diversity of worldviews and global perspectives. So you'll be learning from your peers as well as, well as from your academics. Okay, our next question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Winona State University? I would tell students if you are planning to study residentially, so if you're planning to study actually at a university campus, go visit if any way possible um, and make sure that you visit multiple campuses um, because every campus has a unique feel um, and choose the campus that you feel the most at home at because it's going to be your home for four years um, and you want to make sure that you're comfortable in the area that you're going to be studying. John Cabot University, your advice? Yeah, I would say to do your research, not only on the school itself, but the surrounding city that it's in. Um, you know, if you don't, if you're more of a city person, maybe you want to go to the school that's close to the city. Um, you know, don't just do your research on the school, but do it around everywhere. Because like you said, it's going to be your home for four years. And University of Wisconsin, Platteville. I think I would give the advice of, uh, not pinholing yourself in thinking you only want one type of university, really expand, go to some private schools, go to public, um, you know, liberal arts, check all the opportunities and then make your decision. Uh, and then also don't rush the process and try to do everything your senior year. Please start maybe your junior year in that summer. And don't feel bad if you really feel like you need to have a second visit we want you to come back because we want to make sure that this is a smart decision and you're going to feel comfortable there for the next four years. So take a second look if you need to. And Marquette University, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, I, I would advise to really think about your five non-negotiables, things that are really important to you that the institution that you're looking at really must have. And so whether that's urban or rural, whether that has a specific major or a certain activity or special interests that you have um, and framing your college search journey and looking at the institutions in, in regards to really what are your non-negotiables can also help you narrow down where you wanna visit and where you wanna to apply to, uh, but also thinking about these schools in terms of fit. So you wanna find that academic fit, 
You want to find that financial fit, but you also want to find that social fit, right? Visiting campuses, getting that feel. And so if you go into your college process in terms of really thinking about these non-negotiables and thinking about your fit in these kind of ways can really be helpful as you consider what schools you want to visit and which schools you want to apply to. And so as University of London. I think everybody has said everything for me. <laughs> I totally agree with um, all the others. Um, perhaps in addition, I would say, look carefully at the structures of programs. Uh, degrees are very different at different institutions, especially in the UK. So an accountancy and finance degree can be very, very different from one university to the next. So make sure you have a look at the course modules and see exactly what's being covered to find the right fit for you. Okay, our last question. What is one myth you'd like to debunk? on the college admissions process. We're going back to Winona State University. You do not have to know your major. We know over 70% of college students change their major at least one time. Uh, you don't have to know your major. Uh, we, we like it when you have some kind of idea and you've done some exploration about the things maybe you don't wanna do and what you're leaning towards, um, but you absolutely do not have to know walking in the door as an 18 or 19 year old, um, what you wanna do with the rest of your life. And we expect that. Um, and we have a lot of programs in place to help you figure that out once you get here. John Cabot University. Um, I guess I'd say that's, you know, always when you're applying for financial aid, make sure you, you know, look at the tuition first. And if, if that's too much, make sure that you do all of the research you can on the financial aid that that school does offer. Um, because sometimes the financial aid team wants to give you more and they want you to come. Um, so I always kind of ask that extra question. And University of Wisconsin Platteville, what's your one myth you'd like to debunk? I was going to jump on a little bit about what John Cabot said regarding financial aid. Um, he's right. You never know um, what's going to be offered from a university. But uh, I think one of the myths out there is the thought that, oh, my family makes too much. I'm not going to be able to get anything if I fill out the financial aid. And I think over the last two years with the pandemic, um, we found that that's not necessarily true. And please everyone fill out the financial aid because besides um, getting any type of federal or uh, state aid, some of those scholarships out there may require a financial aid being filled out. So it depends on the institution. It depends on uh, the scholarships that are being offered maybe locally as well. They may require a FAFSA. So everyone should fill out a financial aid form. It should only take it half an hour. So I would encourage that. Great, and Marquette University. I think one of the pieces that I would like to share is, is really there, we are humans behind your applications, really reviewing uh, your applications for admissions. We really, truly as admissions counselors, as admissions representatives in, in the field of admissions, we, we care about your success. We wanna help you through this college search process and we are really the best resources for you to connect to, to help you through each of our institutions, um, but also just uh, overall about your college search process. And so know that the, the time and energy you spend in your application um, at uh, specifically, uh, you know, behind um, at our, our at our institutions and behind that application while we're reading it, we're, we're really seeing you as a person. We're reviewing you holistically um, and we want to get to know you uh, and put that face to that name. Um, so connect to us, reach out to us. Uh, we're not scary. We're really here to help uh, you through this process. And so as University of London, what's your one myth? Um, Connected to what was said previously there, I think in terms of applying internationally outside of your home country, 
I think there's a lot of fear that it's going to be very complicated and difficult. And how will you cope with like a new education system? I think that's something you don't need to worry too much about. We, we offer so much support in terms of um, making your application. And when you come to university, there'll be so many people here to help you adjust and settle in and find your way. And as I said before, we're a huge international community. So you're not alone there. People are coming from all over the world to join. Well, thank this. you. Thank you for your answers. Thank you for joining us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions, including the programs available this week and in May. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com forward slash launch. Thank you.